Hi everyone, I'm the Amanda Hagen. And I'm the Omega. And we decided to invent some dishes that you probably shouldn't cook. And may God have mercy on our poor poor souls. Potato chips. Crisps! Were invented when a chef's revenge on an unruly customer backfired. Sometimes good things can come from stupid ideas. Sometimes. They're still called crisps! Today we're looking at... Kugel lasagna. Is that shorthand, or is this another one of your epic cultural crossovers? Bingo! Okay, so we've crossed over Jewish and Mexican before, so I thought maybe Jewish and Italian might work a bit better. So Kugel is a sweet noodle casserole of Ashkenazi Jewish origin, first noted in Germany in the 13th century. It's a common staple on the table during the Holy Days and features eggs, noodles or potatoes, and dairy. I think I can see where this is going. It's going to Beach City because Kugel is about to fuse with lasagna. This is going to involve an excess amount of cheese, isn't it? Oh, yes. Oh, so much cheese. Let's get her done! Okay, you're going to need a lot of ingredients to pull this one off. For the kugel, you'll need egg noodles, butter, eggs, sugar, cream cheese, sour cream, and cottage cheese. For the lasagna part, you'll need minced beef or turkey, a small onion, garlic, tomato sauce, and shredded cheese. Start by preheating the oven and putting water on for the noodles. Chop and saute the onion and garlic, then brown the mince, adding the sauce when done. While the mince is going, cook the noodles as per package directions, then set aside. In a medium bowl, beat the egg yolk, sugar, and cream cheese. Add this to the noodles with the sour cream and the cottage cheese. Beat the egg whites until they form stiff peaks and fold it into the mixture. With a greased dish handy, layer the kugel with the lasagna filling and then top with shredded cheese and put into the oven until hot and bubbly. Okay, so this looks great. And just look at all that cheese! This isn't kosher, is it? Parv? Let's try it. Now, I have nice. never had kugel before. I have. So this My grandma and I would make it all the time. So, you know. Now, I specifically, I said this like while we were cooking, but I specifically went for a kugel recipe that did not involve cinnamon or raisins because those, it's a sweet kind of casserole, so you will find cinnamon and raisins, but I thought it would be really nasty. With the, uh, with the lasagna. It smells like quiche. I hate quiche. Oh, it's so good. Quiche is like a Chicago pizza gone wrong. No, quiche is like, it involves eggs. Go come over, you're not really in the shot. Join us. They never the want me to be in the shot. I'm ugly. Mmm. This is so a quiche. Good. This is a quiche with meat. This is fantastic. This couldn't have gone better. It's like you get a little bit of that sweet kobo flavor, but, oh, this is... Great. And we actually cheated as well. We used um, fat-free uh, cottage cheese and um, light cream cheese. No sour cream next time. It was only four tablespoons. Only four tablespoons. Sorry, soured cream. I meant to buy it for Jessica. It was soured cream. I think this is fantastic. It's sort of, it's. I'm finding it hard to try stuff because of the amount of heat coming off it. Oh. We had to make a lot of concessions, like we had to use Chinese egg noodles because regular old egg noodles just aren't a thing here. I don't know how this is, but so that's very a racist thing. against Germans. Huh. And mm. well, this is bread stuff. Mm -mm. Well, this is like bread. It's eggs. The eggs have turned into bread. This is egg bread. Because the eggs are so fluffy. Remember that's why we spent all that time, a lot of time. Whipping up the uh, the egg yolks or the egg. We. Um... Okay, you were well. You were standing there holding the thing the whole time. I gotta say, yeah, five minutes of you whisking that, and me standing there, it was really irritating to stand there hold the shot, because I know I'm only gonna use a little bit of the shot, which you'll have seen. It is hot though. We we let it sit for about ten minutes before we uh, played but it. The... It will be. Um, I didn't want to only see bits of it and then only get the crap shots of you know meringue happening. Because, you know, meringue, when it's not good, it's terrible. All right. I have no idea what to say. I have no... It fluffed up a lot in the in the oven, but then, like, kind of, like, deflated a bit. I have no context for this, mm. whatever. It's not bad. Well, kugel is usually... Imagine the part that's without the Italian part. No. A lot sweeter, involving cinnamon and raisins, and probably a bit of double cream as well. Cold. It's a That's bit how of, kugel is. It's cooked and then it's served cold. It's a bit of bread pudding. Well, in my family, it was. It's like bread pudding made complicated. Mm, but there's no bread involved, though. The, um... 
Oh, this is gonna be so horrible. Because it's pleasant. It's got good flavors. It's just in a in a way in a in a order so that I just... don't have context for. So I'm just a bit befuddled. Well, you haven't thrown up yet. Well, yeah, that was because you had like Smucker's grape jelly ruining very nice peanut butter thing. And the wasabi thing that one time. Fucking the wasabi, wasabi peas. Fucking well, wasabi. Was, the wasabi peas were fucking nasty. Wasabi mushy peas. Wasabi is nice. In that episode, I had to be scripted as someone who loves what mushy peas when I don't love mushy peas. Because you're the British one. So, and that was fun. We were first dating online. I used to call her Britisher. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing, apparently, not so little of what we think wasabi is is actual wasabi. It's just like horseradish dyed green. This is true, you can look it up. No, do we have anything else to say for the actual, about the actual, because they don't want to sit here watching us eat for That's true. Years. Um, well, it worked. I thought it would be really, really nasty, but it actually came together, and I think you should, probably should cook this. I like it to be less fluffy and bread-like. I'm perfectly fine with the pasta with mixed with the garlic. It's the eggs. Stuff. It's because there's six eggs went into this. Six British eggs. Just, so, you know. I just, I'm, I'm, finding, the, I'm finding the mix of meringue and sort of stuff to be just... Well, why? It's not actually a traditional meringue. Because there was no sugar in it. I love meringue. But it was, it was egg whites whipped to stiff peaks. And on, and on the Tasty videos, it always seems so easy because, like, it happens over the course of three seconds. It looks so easy in our video, too. Because mm. someone, me, is going to have to edit it. That's what you should do for a stinger for this, is just have, like, put it up to the highest speed that Final Cut will will go at. Just all of the uh, all of the whisking of the of the eggs, because it'll, ha it'll happen all over like the course of, like... five or six minutes of it. It'll happen over the course of, like, what, ten seconds? Do it. Guys, I believe the fastest speed that Final Cut can go to for footage is a thousand percent. What does that mean? Ten times faster. Okay. I think it can go ten times. It might be, actually might go faster than that, but... And I think the way it calculates speed, I think We hadn't eaten today and it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. I think it's not just a case of making it ten times faster. I think it, I think it like stacks. Oh. So it, it looks faster than ten times, but yeah, you can get decent speed. I think you should do that. I think I could probably... Actually, no, I'm ridiculous. Sorry. I, in one of my five-second movies, in the Ch Children Living Dead, mm -hmm. I turn Children Living Dead into like a five-second or eight-second, the entire film into a eight, into a few-second block. So wow. I could, I can speed it up more than just into ten seconds. Anyway, she, she, she likes it. I am ambivalent. Which is the best we can hope for, really. But well, I'm still you really, eating it. You really liked the curry lasagna when we made that. That was that was amazing. Yeah. I guess all the la like, I guess lasagna can't be bad. The curry lasagna, which in the script you claimed you invented. Oh, I forgot about that. But its entire thing was mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I knew the fruit fajitas were yours. The curry lasagna was because I went to Mama Salas and I was like, oh, we're an Indian Italian fusion place. I want some curry lasagna, but they didn't do things like that. They yet. should though. But now they started doing stuff like that. But, you know, like with curry pizza and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're getting there. The first time we went there, I got I got a, uh, I think it was a korma pizza or something like that. My father-in-law was like, what, you could have had anything and you got a curry pizza? And I'm like, yeah, but it's fusion. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fair. So, time for the voiceovers? Mm-hmm. So what could be done to improve this dish? Well, maybe taking it in some other cultural directions, like South American or Eastern European. There's definitely room for some veggies in here. Sautéed leeks might go well. Right, so this was certainly something. You know, I really have to stop scripting these with such vague endings because it was actually pretty fantastic, just saying. And join us next time for something else that you probably shouldn't cook. And if you have any recipe ideas, please send them our way. Yeah, yeah boy.
Good. We'll put that in the flubs. <laughs>